stuff. And I, uh, and I, I also think the anti fourth doctor relationship has moments of absolute beauty. I think they're amazing stuff. And not only in the Pupil Trap and the Godness, but in State of Decay in particular. Um, I think that's some stunningly beautiful. Tom is famously not an easy actor, but at, um, you'll notice that he actually acts with me. Maybe because he thought I was so fragile. He actually looks in my eyes. If you ever watch Tom and Lala, you'll see that Tom never looks in her eyes. Um, but he does actually look in my eyes. There is a sort of an actor who's in some ways quite difficult, but in fact there is some, some generosity. Uh, and he was quite generous with me. And there's a sort of sweetness in that relationship, which I absolutely love. And I think is almost the relationship different from any other relationship between a, a doctor and a companion. Uh, William Hartnell and Susan have some of it, but it's not quite the same thing. Um, but I love it. I think it's great. And I think those programs have worn, all things considered, and, and the age of them now, I think they've worn really well. And they were inventive and ambitious. And very various. One of the things that Dr. Hackers have sometimes said is that they all blurred, all the stories were sort of the same. And I never ever, but that's because I liked the program anyway, and knew it anyway, and understood its rhythms to that extent. But I never felt they were the same. I felt they were unbelievably various and different. I don't know how somebody could say, get the Keeper of Trark and confused with Warrior's Gate. That is, to me, that would, would have been unimaginable. Well, let's bring on your co-star from that period. She was a veteran when she was a teenager. She was the star of The Moon Stallion and Alice in Wonderland, but to us, she's Nissa. Sarah Sutton. <laughs> Together, a moment from the Keeper of Trarka. Oh, it's classic. Finished? Yes. And? Uh, all sorts of things. Time and energy will be displaced. Energy will overflow. Overload the control element. And Melka? A source will consume itself. And whoever controls it. Or at least that's the Doctor's theory. Let's hope we don't have to put it to the test. If Adric was a, a sort of a source of moral doubt in the TARDIS, <laughs> then you, I think, as Nissa, were, were a source of, of, of something quite the opposite, really, weren't you? You were kind of the moral centre. Yes, yes. Um, Nissa's a very moral person. She's very straight. What you see is what you get with Nissa. And she's had this um, upbringing um, in, in her particular society, and she's very bright. Um, I, th I think she's a lovely character. And there, there is a little bit of me, I think there's a little bit of all of us in all the characters we play, but I'm nowhere near as clever as this. <laughs> I have to say, that's a But it's interesting that both of you came with that sort of idea attached, really. Nissa, a scientist, Adric, a mathematician, almost as, if, you know, almost as if to encourage and reassure young people in the audience who might be interested in those things, that these were yeah. good things to be interested in. I've had some lovely comments today from um, some, some women who said, you know, you were such an inspiration because there was a woman on the television, and we're talking now in the early 80s, so we're, you know, we're going back a bit, um, who, who was an inspiration because she was smart and she... Uh, if she had a problem, she worked out how to how to fix it. So, yeah, that was a really that was one of the nicest things people have said to me actually. And what observations did you make about the, the shift in in leading man? How did that affect? The, well, that that very very of, similar to Matthew which, really. Is that I joined obviously after Matthew. Matthew had been on, on the show a while before before I joined. So I joined right at the very end, and the the atmosphere had, had got quite heavy and. Uh, Tom's a, you know, a wonderful character, but I was absolutely terrified of him. And um, I, knew just, I just didn't know what to expect of him. He was under all this sort of thing. And they would practice, they were going to go through this door and do that. And then, of course, they get in their costumes on the set in the studio, and, and the door frame's this high, and they can't get through the door. So all that hours of choreography just goes out the window in a second, and it all has to be reblocked. But um, no, generally, I think we, we, we all had a good time, and the guest actors pretty much enjoyed their time, I think. Janet Fielding was upset, just this thing about walking through doors and stuff, Janet Fielding was obsessed with the fact that the spaceship in the visitation was not designed for the kind of creature the Terra Leptor actually was. It wasn't designed for a creature with claws. It was just this rather cool looking spaceship, but he, but he had to struggle to make it work. But it wasn't designed for him. It was absolutely bizarre. <laughs> yes, it was. 
Was, and then once they fell over, of course, the pterodactyls cannot get up. It's, no. like, it's like a beetle on the back, you know, so um, we used to be very sorry. Did they go over often? Well, they did, actually, and then we'd all go off to lunch and leave them. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, I'm just for lunch then. <laughs> so they were, they were stuck. So don't ever, if there's a job yeah. being... Yes. If they ever revive the pterodactyls, turn the job yeah, down. Don't, don't, don't go for it. Now, what, how, what about directors? How seriously did incoming directors take it? Well, we had a sort of little circle of directors, so we repeated, didn't we, with directors? So they all knew, they knew it quite well, and they knew, you know, obviously how, how to work it, how to get the best out of the time that they've got. So we did, um, we did repeat on, on the directors. Has there a lot of mixture actually of old sort of BBC hats who have been turning out television years, like the wonderful Peter Moffat, who we all adored, but also a lot of beginners? It was a programme you started on, which actually, if you think about Doctor, makes no sense at all. Know, it's just not what a programme started. But Paul Joyce, who directed Warriors Gate, I think he'd never directed anything in his life. Grimway, Peter Grimway, those, those stories that he directed with me, in, which I think is ended in directed. Uh, on Doctor Who. He'd never directed anything before, as far as I'm aware, and in fact wished, wanted to be a writer, but Peter's ambition to be a writer. So you have these very people right at the beginning, um, stuck on this actually very complicated, this is not like turning out an episode of EastEnders, this is really quite complicated for a director. And I think some of them found it a bit of a struggle. Shall we look at a bit of Peter Grimway's work, <laughs> your death scene, oh. from Earthshock, let's see. <laughs>